So in this video, I will talk about how to perform six basic bachelor-level data analytical methods: descriptive statistics, correlation, t-test, chi-square, ANOVA, and linear regression. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how to perform these analyses in SPSS, and today we're going to do them in R Studio. SPSS is an expensive piece of software, but R and R Studio are completely free, which is why many universities these days are switching from teaching SPSS to teaching R. So essentially, we can do our data entry in Excel, or if you think Excel is too expensive, we can use Calc, which is the open office equivalent to Microsoft Excel. Calc is completely free, and it can save data files in Excel format or CSV format, both of which can be imported into R and R Studio. So if we partner up Calc with R, we can perform data entry and statistical analysis completely for free. So let's get started with our analysis. So first, let's import some data. So this is an Excel format data file that contains 102 participants about team building exercises. Let's first attach the data file. And then we're going to do some basic descriptive analysis. Let's say I'm interested in knowing the average age of the employees included in this sample. We can see the mean age is 22. What about the range? Youngest 17, oldest 52. We can also calculate the variance and the standard deviation. The standard deviation is, of course, the square root of the variance, which in this case is 6.4. By using the command summary, we can generate a statistical summary of this variable. For categorical variables such as gender, we can use the command table. In order to look at the gender distribution, so in this case, 66 females and 36 males. We could also get the percentages. All we need to do is to divide this portion of the command by the sample size, which is 102, as we can see over here. So about 65% female and 36% male. So there we go. These are the basic descriptive analyses that a bachelor student needs to be able to apply. Okay, now we can move on to correlation. Let's say I'm interested in knowing whether employees' age is related to the amount of experience that they have in the hospitality industry or not, because this is a data set from a hotel. For that, we need to run a correlation. We can do a correlation test between age and experience. And we can see in this case, the Pearson correlation coefficient is 0.76. And we're looking for a p-value that is, of course, below 0.05. And 2.2 to the negative power of 16 is obviously much, much smaller than 0.05, meaning that this correlation is significant. We can also visualize the relationship between age and experience. So as shown in this scatter plot, the older the employee is, the more experience he or she has in the hotel industry. We can also look at the correlations among multiple variables by producing a correlation matrix. Let's say I'm interested in the correlations among variables 10 through 12, then we can ask for the correlations among these variables. We will then see that our studio produces a correlation matrix among these variables. And that is how we do bivariate correlation analysis in our studio. So, we can now move on to doing a t test. Let's say I'm interested in knowing whether there is a statistical difference in terms of professional experience between male and female employees in this sample. For that, we need to do a t test. So first, I would like to know what the average amount of experience is for all the employees included in this sample. Then, I would like to take a look at the average amount of experience per gender.
So this would give me the mean experience of male employees. Let's also do female employees. I would also like to find out the range for both genders. I'd also like to take a look at the variance. Let us now do the t-test. We're gonna first set variance equal to true. And then we're gonna do it again with variance equal set to false. And finally, we also need to do a Levine's test to see whether the variances are equal or not. So these are all the commands we need, we can run them. Alright, so first we can see that the mean experience for all the people included in this sample is 4.5 or so years. The mean experience for only male employees is 3.9 years, and the mean experience for females is 4.75. We could also see that the most experienced male employee has 13 years of experience in the field, and the most experienced female employee has 30 years of experience. Furthermore, we can see that the variance values are numerically different between the two genders. The experiences of female employees are associated with a variance value of 27.5, whereas male employees have 8.9 or so. And now let's take a look at the t-test outcomes we could see that the two t-tests yielded similar results. In both cases, we see that there is no statistical difference between the two genders in terms of their experience. The t-values in both cases are associated with a p-value much greater than 0.05. However, the outcomes of these two t-tests are slightly different, and that is because in one case, we set variance equal to true, and in the other case, we set it to false. To see whether variance equal should be set to true or false, we have performed the Levine's test. And in this case, we can see that although the two variance values are numerically different, but they are not statistically different. And therefore, we can conclude that in this particular sample, we should set variance equal to true for the t-test and that the first t-test which we performed is the one that we need in this case. And that is how you do a t-test in our studio. All right, so we're going to now do a chi-square test. We would perform chi-square tests in order to test the relationships amongst categorical variables. I have already imported and attached the data, and in this particular data file, we have two variables. And these two variables are gender and sport. For gender, we've got males and females, 70 males and 155 females. For sport, we have 149 people who prefer badminton and 76 people who prefer soccer. Let's do a cross tab on these two variables. We can see that among the females, we have 126 females who indicated that they preferred badminton and 29 females who indicated that they prefer soccer. And for males, we have 47 males who indicated that they preferred soccer and 23 males who indicated that they preferred badminton. Let's see if these two variables are related. So we can see that the chi-squared value is 48.43, and it is associated with a significant p-value, 3.425 to the power of negative 12, which is below 0.05. And therefore, we can conclude that there is a relationship between gender and sport according to the chi-squared test. And that is how we do a chi-square in our studio. 
Let us now do an analysis of variance. I am interested in knowing whether supervisor responsiveness differs across nationalities. I have imported and attached the data file. Let's take a look. I am interested in knowing the general level of supervisor responsiveness. I am also interested in the level of supervisor responsiveness across three different nationalities. So in this data file, we've got Germans, Chinese, and Dutch. We also need to perform the actual analysis of variance. And should there be significant differences, we want to see what these differences are. Okay, now we can run it. We can see that the overall supervisor responsiveness level is 5.84. German supervisors are rated 6.08. Chinese supervisors are rated 5.87. And Dutch supervisors are rated 5.15. The outcome of the ANOVA indicates that there is a significant difference. The p-value is 0 0.0006. And the multiple comparisons show the difference between Dutch and Chinese is significant, the difference between German and Chinese is not, and the difference between German and Dutch is. And this is analysis of variance in our studio. Moving on to regression. We're going to do a regression analysis trying to predict CD sales on the basis of advertisement spending and airplay time. I am using the same data set as I used in the SPSS video I have already imported and attached the data. First, let's try to visualize the relationship between advertisement spending and CD sales. Let's also visualize the relationship between airplay time and CD sales. Let's do two regressions. First, we're going to predict CD sales on the basis of advertisement. And in the second regression, we're going to predict CD sales on the basis of advertisement spending and airplay. So using two predictors to predict the dependent variable. We will then ask for a summary of the outcomes of both regressions. Okay, now we can run them. The scatter plot shows that there appears to be a pretty noticeable positive relationship between advertisement spending and CD sales. And the same goes for airplay and sales. Now we run the regressions. In this first regression analysis, we're trying to predict CD sales using advertisement spending. We can see that the regression model overall is significant. Furthermore, we can also see that advertisement spending as a predictor is a positive and significant predictor of CD sales. In the second regression analysis, we can see that the model overall is also significant and that both predictors, advertisement spending and airplay time, are significant predictors of CD sales. And furthermore, we notice that airplay time is associated with a much steeper slope. So 3.59 versus 0 0.09. But both predictors are significant. So this is a regression analysis in our studio. Alright, thanks for watching this Randy Waste Random video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.